In this video, we're going to talk about composite functions and inverse functions combined. So let's start with the basics. Using the data table that we have on the right side, evaluate this expression. What is the value of f of 2? f of 2, if we look at the function f and the x value 2, it will give us a value of 8. So f of 2 is equal to 8. Now, what is f, what is the inverse of f of 8? The inverse of f of 8, it gives us the x value, which is 2. It's simply the opposite. So when dealing with inverse functions, you need to reverse x and y. So when you're evaluating a function like f, g, or h, you're looking for the y value. So the y value corresponds to the last two columns. It's the value of f and g. When you're trying to find the inverse, the number inside is y, and it's going to give you x. So if you're trying to evaluate the inverse function, you're looking for the x value. If you're trying to evaluate a regular function, you're looking for the y value. So with that being said, what is the inverse of f of negative 7? What's the answer to this problem? In other words, f of what number is equal to negative 7? Negative 7 is the y value. What we're trying to find is the x value. So let's look at f, and let's see where it's equal to negative 7. So f is equal to negative 7 here. The answer we're looking for is the x value. So it's 4. f of 4 is negative 7. So the inverse of f of negative 7 is 4. Go ahead and try these problems. Find the value of g of 0, f of 2, g of the inverse of g of 5, and the inverse of f of 1. So g of 0, we're looking at g, x is 0, the y value is 6. f of 2, x is 2, we're looking at f. This corresponds to a y value of 8. The inverse of g of 5. So we're dealing with g. Now, the 5 is not an x value, it's a y value. We're looking for the x value. The x value that corresponds to that is 4. Now what about the inverse of f of 1? So we're looking at f, the y value is 1, the corresponding x value is 0. So remember this, when you're evaluating regular functions like these two, this should be a 0. I don't know why I put an x here. That's what happens when you get old. So whenever you're evaluating the regular functions, you're looking for the y value. When you're evaluating the inverse functions, you're looking for the x value. So the inverse of f of 1 is 0. The inverse of g of 5 is 4. So now that we know how to do that, let's work on some harder problems. Try these two problems. Let's move on to composite functions. Find the value of f of g of 1 and also the inverse of f of g of 2. So let's work on the inside. g of 1. We're looking for the y value. Here's g, here's 1. 
the y value is 3. So now we're looking for f of 3. So we're looking for another y value. Here's f, here's 3. The y value is 6. So f of g of 1 is 6. Now let's move on to the next one. What is g of 2? So we have g, 2, g of 2 is 4. So now we have the inverse of f of 4. So we're looking for an x value. Starting with f, the y value is 4. The corresponding x value is 1. So the inverse of f of 4 is 1. Go ahead and try these two problems. f inverse of g of 8 and also the inverse of g and the inverse of f of negative 7. So go ahead and work on those two problems. So let's start with this. What is the inverse of g of 8? So we have g. We're going to find where it's equal to 8, and that's here. And we're looking for the x value. So that is 3. So now we have f of 3. So now let's evaluate f of 3. So we got f 3, f of 3 is 6. So that's it for that problem. For the next one, we have the inverse of f of negative 7. So here's negative 7 in the f column. The x value that corresponds to that is 4. So now we're looking for the inverse g of 4. So looking at column g, here's the 4. The x value that corresponds to that is 2. So that's it for the second example. Once you do this after a while, it gets easier. So now that you're getting the hang of this, let's try some harder problems. Try these two. The inverse of f and the inverse of g of 3. For the next one, we're going to have three functions. f of g of the inverse of f of 4. Go ahead and try those two problems. So let's start with this. The inverse of g of 3. So looking at the g column, we find 3 and then find the corresponding x value, which is 1. So now we have the inverse of f of 1. So now let's look at the f column, find 1, and find the corresponding x value, which is 0. Moving on to the next one, the inverse of f of 4. So focusing on the f column, here's 4. The corresponding x value is 1. So f of the inverse of f of 4 is 1. So now we have f of g of 1. So now we can evaluate g of 1. So x is 1. And we get 3. So g of 1 is 3. We're looking for the y value this time. So now we have f of 3. So x is 3. We're looking at the f column. That corresponds to 6. So that's it for that one. Now for the sake of practice, let's work on one more example. Let's say we have the inverse of f and then of g 
and then another inverse of f of 6. Go ahead and try that. So the inverse of f of 6, let's start with that. So looking at the f column, let's find the y value of 6, and then the corresponding x value is 3. So the inverse of f of 6 is 3. And then g of 3, g of 3 is 8. Now the inverse of f of 8. So here's f, here's 8, the corresponding x value is 2. So the final answer for the whole thing is 2. So now you know how to evaluate composite functions that contain, well, I guess you could say inverse composite functions. In other words, you know how to evaluate stuff that looks like this. Thanks for watching.